Becoming an online personal trainer is a big appeal for coaches. No more 6 a.m. wake-ups and no more late 10 p.m. finishes. No more canvassing the gym to find prospects. You can charge higher prices and you can stop trading time for money. You can live that laptop lifestyle and you can work from anywhere in the world. You can also become more specific in who you work with and again, you can work with anyone around the world. But what does it take to become an online coach and how do you train transition from training people in person to doing it online. What would your day look like as being an online coach and how do you get to that elusive six figures and make over $10,000 or £10,000 a month? In this video, I want to answer all those questions for you, but it's not going to be coming from me. The answers are coming from a successful online coach who's transitioned his business online and actually moved abroad. By the end of this video, I would like you to have an understanding of what it actually takes to build a successful online business. Welcome, Andy Vincent. It's great to be here with you in person. Andy's actually my online coach and really good friend. So Andy, if you could just introduce yourself and just let us know how you started in the industry. Okay, thank you. So uh, I've been a coach for 22 years now, a uh, coach mainly in, in London. And then five years ago, I transitioned to become a online personal trainer. So now I work fully online. The main reason for it, I guess, is like a lot of people, I was in the gym floor, um, you hit that ceiling of what you can earn, the only way I could earn any more was early mornings, later nights, extra days, weekends, and it got to the point that I just couldn't do any more hours, so I had to find a better way to think of how to produce more cash on going. Did you feel like that, you, that had a bigger impact, you have a bigger impact on changing their life, just like, you know, I used to do one session a week. And I felt like it kind of got me started to train, but then when I started working with you online, we looked at lifestyle, we looked at habits, we looked at sleep. So do you think that kind of spans across all of your clients? Yeah, definitely. Like working with um, working with clients in the gym, I always knew that the ones that did the best were the ones that could adhere to things outside of the gym. And for some people, you can just give them some general advice and it would work. But for a lot of people, they're going to struggle because I know you tell us to eat more protein, but don't necessarily know what that means. They don't necessarily know what protein sources are. So yes, you can give them like a list of proteins, but online you can go that that one step further. You can really kind of like find out what they struggle with. You can you can help them because not everyone eats the same food. So you can really get into sort of the nitty gritty. Uh, you just don't have the time on the gym floor to do that. Like if I'm mm. sat talking to someone, they're doing their sets in the squat rack. How are you going to remember what you spoke about? How are you going to create a structure in the way that you coach things? So sort of every two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, you're teaching them something new and how it all lays into their lifestyle. So this online training is just a much more structured way to go about sort of delivering your key pillars as a coach um, and then keeping them accountable to it because it's great you set these things up and then we know long term, how do I keep someone accountable to all the things they're trying to do at once. For a lot of people, it's like trying to keep all these plates spinning. And as a coach, I can make sure that I can talk to them about what they're struggling with, make sure they're working on it, and then to keep everything sort of ticking over in the background, it can just be a much more structured way to work. Knowing you and knowing obviously you've coached me, it's interesting actually because you spoke about seeing things in the gym that you don't necessarily see online. You program in a certain way where you can see those things, right? You, I know you've spoken about getting videos from clients. Does that help you? Like make those decisions and program in the right way? Yeah, definitely. I'm working with clients and um, generally I'm working with women. They're coming to me with more of a cardiovascular, cardio training background. They've done some weight training, but they've not really gone into like really complex compound lifts. So I can't jump in with big barbell lifts from the start. So I have a structure I want to go through. I want to see um, a certain amount of videos really of, I want to see him do a goblet squat. I want to see him do a, a dumbbell sumo squat. I want to see those exercises, make sure the technique is there and then sort of build it up from there. So I have a very much a, a process in place. And that's the thing with being online is you don't necessarily need a process at first, but you realize that you're going to have to have processes in everything you do to become more streamlined online. So they're all things that just happen organically to make sure I can coach people safely through from basics all the way up to sort of compounds. And you've got to find, like you said, you've got to find your area, find your niche where you want to work with. Um, and for me, it's been a really like, uh, organic part of that sort of uh, that journey for me. And what does a typical day look like uh, as now being an online coach? Obviously when you were in person, in the gym, it's very structured, wasn't it? You were early starts, like you mentioned, yeah. late finishes. What does it look like now? 
still very structured. Um, I have my days that I have my, my coaching calls. I have days that I dedicate for content creation. Um, so it, it really depends on the day. So I start my week, my check-ins on a Monday. Uh, Tuesday I have, have calls. Wednesday is like a full admin day for my blog writing, content creation. Um, Thursday again, I have some more calls. And Friday I do my program design. So my week's very kind of like structured. Um, and it's evolved over the last kind of five years. That's how I've decided I should best operate. But, um, but yeah, there's lots of ways to do it, I guess. And what would you say are some new skills that you need to develop? Because you did a lot in terms of like theory and application of becoming an offline coach. Um, but what skills did you think you really needed to start to transition to be online? Well, so I moved online, I moved to Spain and I realized very quickly that what I knew as a, as a trainer, um, all my education up, at, up to that point was nutrition and biomechanics. And online, I had no business skills. Uh, I thought I had good time management skills, but I, I didn't for, for the job. I didn't know how to create content. I didn't know how to write copy. Uh, I didn't know how to use tech. So obviously working with you as a business coach, um, just really upskilling all the areas that I didn't even need, know I need to know um, has been has been massive. So it's, it's great the skills that you have as a trainer. Um, some of those do transition online really well, but actually a lot of what you need to know isn't the stuff that you are taught in a gym. So it's uh, it really is that business content creation, um, and yeah, the, and the, and how to manage your time, how to set boundaries. Awesome. Yeah, some good advice there. So how do you think? in-person training compares to online training? Because I think that's where a lot of coaches don't quite understand online training. Like, you know, you, you've coached in the gym, but then how does that compare to going online? For me, it was kind of an easy transition to go because I was doing my in-person training and I was doing my nutrition work online as part of like a hybrid model in the gym. So for me, it made a kind of clear blueprint to run across because yes, you can't do the, the technical coaching, but actually a lot of what I was doing with my coaches that made the most change and the worth in their life was setting their routines for them, helping them with nutrition, uh, talking them about things like a, a just lifestyle structure that when you're in person, it's really hard to do. So online, yes, of course you can't do technique work to the nitty gritty you can do in person, but you can, you can really round the edges of your services. So for those that are looking to lose weight, build muscle, uh, change the lifestyle, get better habits. When you're sat, at home, working with them, sending emails, setting routines for them. It, it can just be a much more like holistic service. Whereas I found that in-person training was just about the workout, one, two, mm. three times per week. Whereas I can affect people's lives on a much greater level over the course of working with them. What would you say you love the most about online coaching? Oh, just the freedom and the flexibility. Obviously we're sat here in my house in Ibiza. Yeah. Um, the ability to, to, to move away from London to I haven't woken up to an alarm clock in the last like three years. Um, I can go for lunch whenever I want to. I can do like your time is then like you said, start like you're not trading time for money. It's not I have to do eight, ten hours of back to back training to try and generate a certain amount of income. Um, you've got effectively an endless amount. Like if you've got all these different options, obviously you can charge more. You can create different payment structures. It's just so much more open. But for me, more than anything else, it was just the freedom to uh, to get out of the the need to live and work in a city. A bit of a loaded question, but what do you miss the most about in-person training? Do you miss it at all? No, I do miss it. Yeah, I do miss in-person training. I miss the, um, I miss being a, around a network of uh, really well-educated trainers. Um, I've got a really, I've created one of the things that I noticed as I moved away from, from London is it's not having the ability to sort of talk to lots of coaches, sort of bounce some ideas off them and, and sort of learn in that circle that you get in person. So I have worked to generate that uh, background support network. And I do miss sort of like the technical coaching of certain lifts. And over time I've developed sort of better systems to work around that. Um, there is always a slight limitation to the way that I'll program clients. If, so certain things I just won't let them do if I can't see in person. Um, but for me, it's, that's a very small kind of thing to miss for the things that you get back from in person, from online training. What advice would you give, say, a coach that's got an in-person business and they're looking to go online? Really think about where your weaknesses are with what you're trying to scale towards. So for me and for a lot of coaches that I've spoken to, it is the business aspect of it. It's understanding social media, it's understanding what platform to use, how to use that platform, what's the best way about finding an audience, creating your own voice, all those sorts of things. They're just not 
anywhere near this, the skills that I had walking out of the gym. So make sure you work with coaches, uh, some sort of business coach like yourself who's helped me massively. But more than anything else, just, just get started. Like just, you can ponder it. I pondered it for years. I've got friends that are still pondering it now. It's like, just get started. Uh, you haven't got to be perfect from the get go, but the quicker you start taking action, um, the quicker you'll get results. Yeah, amazing advice. So what expectations do you think uh, coaches should have when transitioning online? Because it is portrayed as this like shiny object. Everyone seems to be making so much money. You know, we speak about 10K a month, 20K a month, but what expectations would, would you set? Don't think that being an online trainer is easier than being an in-person trainer. You're not all of a sudden overnight gonna start working way fewer hours, earning four or five times what you were earning. Certainly the potential is there, but you get that with the amount of work you put in. So at the, at the start end of it, when you're building your business, there's a lot of work to do. You're, you're gonna be watching YouTube videos, you're gonna try and like realize what you're not doing very well, try and work on that. Um, and you'll scale, you'll probably start not too cheap, but you'll have to scale your prices up. If you're gonna go high ticket, you can't just jump in at the top. Um, so don't expect necessarily to get to that that kind of, I know I see it all the time, like 10,000 pound a month is like what everyone's sort of shooting for, which is 100% like possible, but um, it does take time to scale to that sort of amount. Yeah, and what would you say the biggest mistakes or pitfalls that people make when going online? I mean, it's loads. If I choose myself, an example then is like, I spent a lot of money developing a, a program before I'd even spoken to anyone that wanted to do it. Um, and I mean, it took years for that particular program to actually just break even because I spent so much money on the front end. Um, and one thing that you guys taught me so well was like to, to get clients and sort of build the program around them, sort of work with them, find out what their problems are, and then master those problems. And that becomes the package you create versus sort of like going out, I, I pay for like studio time to get all my own videos done, edited up, which was, which was great, but, and it was a great learning, but it was really unnecessary at that stage in my business. Um, I think other thing as well, just thinking you have to have all your own custom videos sometimes. Mm. Like a, lot of, a lot of PTs like, I've got all these videos, how are you gonna do that? And like, oh, yeah, you can get some videos, but actually at first, just get clients, get clients, start building a product, and then at some point down the line, you can start to create your own videos. So looking back, what do you wish that you knew when you got started online? Um, I guess I wish I knew you earlier. Um, I wish that, I guess, yeah, this, I'd realized sooner that I needed help. Um, and I'd know as, as an in-person trainer, you're so used to doing so many things by yourself. So I just spent, couple of years really just like trying to do it all myself and, and it's really tough when you're moving to an online space like you don't know what you need to know you don't know what you don't know so it's not until you get started um that you realize quite quickly um that, okay there's, i'm going to need help somewhere but maybe for me it was just being confident enough to actually reach out to someone and uh and start getting help with it but because um yeah you're walking into an arena that you don't necessarily um, have the skill set in. So just trying to upskill those areas was always something I wish I did a bit more of. Andy has built a very, very successful online fitness business around a strong organic marketing approach. That's why I've put together this next video for you to show you where you can get the most organic reach on social media right now. In this video, I dive into the top three social media platforms where right now you can increase your following, grow your reach and boost your engagement so you can interact with more people and hopefully sign more clients. Be sure to check it out and I'll see you in the next video.